Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I'm going to be getting back to CGA graphics programming on my original IBM PC and my XT clone machine which is another 8088 running at 10 MHz. I think I once said this was an 8086 running at 8 MHz but I've since had a really close look at the chip. It actually does say 8088 and that explains a lot of the things that I've been observing with the timings on this thing. Anyway, it's nearly twice the speed of the original IBM PC, which is nice for timings, of course. Uh, so this week I'm going to be updating you on the graphics library I've been writing for CGA on these machines, and also showing you some graphics effects I've been working on. And a couple of these are actually simple enough that you could even code these up yourself, just using, say, a basic interpreter. All you really need is something that can draw lines reasonably well. First let me update you on the CGA graphics routines that I've been writing in assembly language and I've discussed this on the channel before, it's all on GitHub and there's a link in the description. Uh, so everything I discussed previously was for CGA 320 by 200 mode so I've put it into a directory for that and I might add other directories in the future for EGA and VGA and maybe even the special 16 color mode on the Amstrad PC 1512. Uh, so there are still four directories here, they're different versions of the routines, uh, one that doesn't use very much code, uh, one that's really fast, uh, one that's a compromise between size and speed, and one that just breaks all the rules and goes as fast as humanly possible. So this is the one that I've actually changed this week, and instead of using Bresnam's line drawing algorithm, I found another version of line drawing which is kind of approximate, uh, but it uses one less register. So instead of using variables delta x, delta y, and d, which measures how far from a true line you have deviated, uh, it now only uses two variables. And so this saves a register and about 6% of the time, which is a nice speed up. Uh, but of course it might not be pixel perfect, so it's still going to start and end on the right pixels, and it's still going to look like a straight line, but uh, technically it's not a pixel perfect line. Uh, the other things I've added are horizontal and vertical line routines, and I've added that to all of the directories here. Uh, so these are important because even though line can draw horizontal and vertical lines, uh, these are highly optimized and go much, much faster. Uh, so the other thing that I've worked on is uh, an ellipse drawing routine. So originally I had this one here called ellipse, and it's outside of the directories at the moment because it needed cleaning up, and there were some bugs which I've now fixed. Uh, but it has two problems. First of all, you have to turn interrupts off, uh, which is not very nice if you want to use the keyboard or anything like that. And uh, the other problem is that it is approximate, so it doesn't draw a pixel perfect ellipse. So this version is the new one that I've worked on this week, and it drops the restriction of turning interrupts off. So of course that means I had to save an extra register, which is quite a lot of work. Uh, I already only just managed to get this original version working, so I'm really pleased that I managed to find a way to do it with one less register. Uh, but it's still an approximate ellipse, and so that's the next thing I'll be working on, uh, is trying to find a way to do ellipses uh, perfectly uh, within the register restrictions in this machine. And that's going to be a lot of hard work, uh, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. And I'll show you a little bit later in the video what I mean by not pixel perfect. I found a graphical way to illustrate that. Now the other cool new thing that I've been fiddling with is in the CGA 160 by 200 directory. And of course CGA doesn't have a 160 by 200 resolution, but you can simulate it by drawing two pixels at a time in the horizontal direction. So it gives you an effective resolution of 160 by 200. And the reason I got into this is I was watching some old Atari 8-bit demos, uh, one called Newman in particular, which is really incredible. And I noticed that the highest resolution that they were working with in four color mode is about 160 by 192 screen resolution, which is basically half the CJ resolution in the horizontal direction. And this means that they actually get to work with half the video RAM. That's just the way the Atari was set up. Now, we don't get that on the PC, unfortunately. Uh, but I realized, even though I can't save on time stuffing data into video RAM, because the amount of video RAM is fixed for the one resolution that's available, I do save some time on computation. If I'm drawing a line uh, in a sort of horizontal-ish direction, then I only have half as many effective pixels in the horizontal direction to worry about, and so there's less computations to do. 
And so in fact, I actually do get a speed up of something like 30 or 40% in the horizontal ish direction over the fastest line drawing in 320 by 200. Uh, now in the vertical direction, it doesn't make much difference. It's about 5% faster, which is what you'd expect because we haven't changed anything in the vertical direction and nor can you. Uh, but I'm really interested to push this as far as I can and see where it goes. Uh, the other advantage is that there are half as many cases because instead of stuffing four pixels into each byte, you're only stuffing two effective pixels into a byte now, which means that there are only two cases that you need to deal with in the code instead of four. And so this makes things dramatically simpler. And the other thing is the counts now can't exceed 160. Uh, so if you're counting pixels in the horizontal direction, you can stuff that into a byte now instead of uh, before where 320 wouldn't fit into a byte. Uh, so there are lots of advantages uh, of this quasi mode and so I'm hoping this will lead to a lot of really cool effects. Now the first thing I wanted to show you in terms of demos that I've been working on uh, using all of the code that I've been writing including some that I haven't told you about yet uh, is this scrolling checkerboard. Now I won't leave this running very long because it uh, gets a bit tired on the eyes and uh, obviously there's a little bit of flicker from my camera as well which is not visible on the screen itself. Uh, but this is running at around 200 frames per second and uh, that's really quite quick for something in CJ but of course I'm not filling every pixel on the screen uh, every frame. All I'm doing is drawing the actual horizontal lines that divide the squares and as those lines move the squares automatically appear to move down the screen. Uh, so obviously drawing horizontal lines is about the best thing you can do as far as CGA memory is concerned. All you have to do is uh, worry about uh, the offset of the lines, so compute where in CGA memory you have to start, and that's something where there's a little bit of overhead which you could optimize away. Um, and then you have to fiddle around with uh, working out the pixels at the beginning of the horizontal line, uh, but from there it's just writing the same word of information representing that color in CGA memory over and over again. And that's the fastest thing you can do uh, with CGA memory. Uh, and then at the end of the horizontal line you have to worry about the pixels at the end of that line. Uh, so this thing really runs flat chat. In fact it's only a few cycles per pixel um, and you know 200 frames per second is really not something you'll see very often. Uh, but even when you have something very very fast like this it's always worth uh, sitting down and thinking uh, is there something I've missed? Is there a way I can make this even faster still? And it turns out with this there actually is. So let me show you that. And here is the fast version and it's so fast, about three or four times faster that the camera can't even keep up, and nor the eye. Uh, so I did rewrite all of this in assembly language. Uh, that shouldn't make any difference at all. Uh, but there's some extra overhead that I managed to eliminate. And if you're wondering what I actually did to speed this up, I actually explained uh, already uh, when I discussed the slow version of this, uh, but you probably overlooked it at the time. And it's certainly something that I overlooked as well when I first started thinking about this. Uh, but it turns out that there is sometimes overhead that you can eliminate uh, that makes a really huge difference. And that's exactly what happened here. Now I mentioned that there's some code that I haven't told you about yet, and that's what I'm using here. Uh, this is another effect that I call Wiper, which uh, really has no write running as fast as it does on a CGA. Now, of course, I'm only drawing the lines at the edge of this, uh, but if I just did this, uh, it wouldn't look correct, because obviously, as you move a line, uh, you need to erase the old line before you draw the new one. And so that would mean I'd have to double up or even triple up, or worse, uh, the lines. Uh, so what I did is I wrote something called a chunky line, algorithm and this blacks out the, the byte before the line, draws the line and then uh, makes blue or purple uh, the byte after the line uh, to the right. And similarly on the other side, black on the right, draw the line, blue on the left and so on. And uh, so this means that I can get this whole effect to run really much much faster than it otherwise would run. Uh, so the lines are only being computed once uh, but I'm using the fact that I already know exactly where I've got to draw the pixel for the line uh, to black out the previous byte and so on. Now, the reason I put so much effort into this, obviously I had to rewrite all of the line drawing code to make this work, uh, is that there's another effect that I really wanted to uh, implement, and I wanted it to be as fast as possible. So let me show you that now. 
And here it is for the first time on the channel, a 3D rotating object in CGA. And there's nothing being pre-computed here except for a sine and cosine table to handle the actual rotation of the points. Uh, but everything else is being computed in real time. Uh, now, of course, it's only possible because I'm using my chunky line uh, algorithm on the sides here. And it's also only possible because these other lines are horizontal. Uh, obviously, if they weren't horizontal, were at an angle, then the chunky lines would have a risk of overriding part of the other lines. So unfortunately, this can't be used uh, for drawing general 3D objects. And I really would like to work towards that uh, on the channel. It'd be great to be able to rotate a cube in any orientation, or a tetrahedron, or a dodecahedron, and so on. Uh, but that's going to require fill routines to fill triangles and uh, this is really a lot more work and it's probably going to run a lot slower as well. Maybe I could manage 30 frames a second. The amazing thing is this is actually running at 200 frames a second. Of course you don't see all of them because the monitor is only at 60. Uh, but uh, it's running really really fast and of course that is just because I'm not doing very much here except the chunky lines at the edge and the horizontal lines and then doing some 3D computations. So I'm really pleased with how this came out. Uh, now you might be wondering, can you use this sort of thing for doing, uh, you know, an FPS game or something like that? And the answer is no, not really. And for the same reason that you can't do general rotation of 3D objects, uh, basically the chunky line trick uh, only works for things like this, where you have some horizontal lines like this. So maybe some of the uh, edges of a room could be rendered in this way, but uh, in general it's not going to work. Uh, so the other thing you might wonder is whether you can put a texture or something on the cube here, and of course that's going to require a huge amount of computation unless you use some tricks. Uh, things like that actually are possible and people have figured out how to do that sort of thing with sufficient pre-computation. Uh, but uh, at the moment the only thing this would really be capable of is putting a pattern, you know, for example alternating colored dots uh, on the different sides. Uh, I haven't quite got that far with this yet because the horizontal lines don't handle that. Uh, but it is something that I could look at doing in the future. Now with all of this 3D stuff you might be wondering whether it's possible to do a 3D checkerboard and have it move just like we did with the 2D one. And it turns out it is possible. Uh, when I first started thinking about this, uh, I really was unsure how to do it. Uh, you can't draw a line and then uh, change its color partway through and then continue drawing it and so on, at least not without a lot of work to modify the line drawing routines, which I didn't want to do in this case. Uh, but it turns out that there is a way to do this and it's really simple. Uh, but first of all, let me show you the effect actually running. And as you can see here, uh, it scrolls really quite quickly. Um, there's uh, a very, very high frame rate here. In fact, you're not even seeing all of the frames uh, because uh, it's going so fast as usual. So this is another thing that has no right to exist uh, on an 8088 machine with CJ graphics. Uh, so you might be wondering how the trick uh, actually works. Uh, well, the trick is so simple you're going to feel cheated. Uh, the first thing you do is you draw this pattern here and basically it just has alternating blue purple or blue purple and I did this by drawing all of the lines from this point here to all of these points then from this point here to all of these points so that fills in the blue one and I did the same for each of the others so these are I think 40 pixels wide they're 20 pixels wide uh, this is a quarter of the way in. So all of this is really straightforward to do, uh, just with some uh, very, very simple line drawing. And then I draw the same thing again in another buffer in memory, but I do it with purple uh, on the left instead of blue. So it looks like this. So now I have two different versions of this, and all I have to do is pick the horizontal lines uh, that I want, for the particular squares that I want to draw. Uh, and so that's all there is to it. And as I'm drawing uh, the lines, the horizontal lines, as the thing is scrolling, I'm just selecting which of the two buffers I pick that horizontal line from. Nothing else really changes. It's just two static images. 
and uh, so this is what it looks like at the start so I just draw the uh, the checkerboard by just picking whichever line that I want and then all I'm going to do is update the lines that go across here and there's a little bit of an algorithm that I need to get the perspective right in terms of which lines I have to update uh, but the whole thing just cycles over and over and that's how it works uh, so it's really straightforward uh, and I was really pleased when I thought of this because at first when I tried to figure out how to draw this uh, everything that I thought of was going to be a lot of work uh, but it's actually a really simple effect and a lot of demo code is like that uh, it tricks the brain into thinking you're seeing something that you're really not. The last thing I want to show you today is the ellipse drawing code. This is basically just drawing ellipses of all possible sizes on the screen. But you'll see every now and again there are some pixels that look out of place. Now it's basically just drawing larger and larger ellipses uh, to fill in the space. Uh, but uh, every now and again it's not pixel perfect and so it'll skip over a pixel. Uh, so the ellipses don't neatly fit inside one another exactly. Uh, and this is because the ellipse drawing code isn't pixel perfect as I said. Uh, so that's something I want to fix in a later version of this code. Uh, the main advantage of this particular version was that interrupts don't get switched off. Uh, that's great for developing code. If you make a mistake and the machine hangs, uh, when the uh, interrupts are switched off, you won't be able to restart the computer with control or delete and that's a pain in the neck. Uh, but this version doesn't have that limitation. Uh, now that comes at a cost, it's about 14% slower than the old ellipse code, uh, but it's still pretty uh, satisfactory in terms of the speed here. We're many times faster than, for example, the ball and graphics interface. Uh, anyway, obviously uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more of this sort of thing in the future. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, today's look and all the different demo effects that I've been working on. As the bag of tricks gets bigger and bigger, the effects are going to become more and more uh, significant, as you can imagine. Uh, so if you like that style of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, but that's all I have time for this week. Uh, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.